Hello and welcome back to part 2 of my IAPLC 2023 contest video. In the previous video, I showed you the construction of the hardscape. If you haven't seen that one, I'll leave a link down below and also in the cards on the top right. In this video, I will go over four main things. Number one, planting selection and execution, the evolution of the scape, green neon tetra spawning, and lastly, the judges' comments and the lessons learned. The main goal this year is to grow very healthy plants. In last year's tank, I couldn't get healthy plants as they were all plagued with this green hair algae. For me, I also feel like the selection of the plants is just as important as the hardscape. It needs to complement and be in harmony with hardscape. And I'm very thankful to Aquaplant Culture for being able to sponsor all my plants for all my projects. They allow me to plant densely from the start. And if you're interested, all the plants I've used are in the description below. A lot of what I do as an architect is sketching as a means to put ideas into something tangible. It is not the best sketch, but it does the job. A key emphasis this year is to make it look natural and have this underwater feeling something that Mr. Juan Puchades had really emphasized in his workshop at Green Aqua. In this layout, I've chosen Cypress Hell Fairy and Eleocharis vivipara to give this draping effect, and that gave the underwater feeling. Furthermore, here are some other snippets of the planting phase. As for the inhabitants, we're going with green neon tetras as the main schooling fish and some otosynclus as the cleanup crew. This is the tank immediately after planting on the 21st of January. And I'm going to flick through a series of photos and videos to show you the evolution of the scape. During this time, there were many adjustments that were made. I added some more plants, removed some plants, like the red lotus, and also continued the sand path to kind of lead your eye all the way to the vanishing point. Next, I want to talk a bit about my green neon tetra spawning. One day, I came home after work and realized something was strange about the green neons. They constantly chased each other around the tank and it turns out that they had been spawning. They were scattering eggs all around the tank, particularly in areas where it's densely planted. Unfortunately, none of the fry survived because the adults ate them way too quickly. Now I want you to watch this circled area really closely. This is the best footage I could capture. 
Did you see it? Well, let me rewind and play that back again in slow motion for you. You can see the male fertilizing the female's eggs and then the eggs springing into the air. And then within split seconds, it gets all eaten up by the other fish. For me, this was something very, very special because this is the ultimate reward nature can give an aquascaper. I believe Mr. Amano once said, the most beautiful aquascape is one that can trick fish and inhabitants to believe they are in nature. Now, I know there are many breeders out there that can do this in their captive tanks, but for me, it never was my intention to breed them. So for them to spawn in my contest tank was a big encouragement to indicate that my tank was natural enough for them to feel safe to spawn. As mentioned before, this scape, Golden Hour, ranked 574 at the IAPLC and ranked 1 in the SAAC, which is the South African Aquascaping Contest. In the South African Aquascaping Contest, we were very lucky to have Mr. Juan Puchades to be the judge. Juan is a world-renowned aquascaper that has ranked highly at many IAPLC entries. He has also done some workshops and some live scapes at Green Aqua. Juan was very generous and provided comments for the top 20 aquascapes. I wish to share with you the feedback that he gave for me. I think it was something very special and very valuable. His comments noted, this aquarium took first place in my opinion. It is a true submerged work of art where the recreation of a submerged landscape reaches its maximum expression in the competition. It scored very highly on natural habitat recreation. We must remember that this scoring criterion is fundamental to the IAPLC scoring system. The compositional level is perfect without any great show or complication, but the planes are well defined. The vanishing point is simply divine and the whole image shows a simplicity and elegance that captivated my eyes. The planting is in perfect health with an intelligent choice an optimal degree of intermixing and there are only two factors that are clearly the two negative points of the setup. One, the planting in the front region is excessive and creates a certain feeling of overload. It would have been wiser to allow more space for the sand so that the compositional weight of this area would be lessened, creating a nice contrast with the planting. Number two, there is a huge technical error in pruning ballast areas. They should never be pruned in the middle of the aculeus, as the tip will never develop again. This is the most obvious mistake in the aquarium and has a very easy solution. The aquascaper must know the correct pruning time so that on the day of the photography, all species look at their best. Congratulations to the author of this magnificent aquarium. The vanishing point presents a magnificent degree of excellence. In my opinion, it is a work that should be in the international top 100 of IAPLC. To have this feedback was a huge honour from Juan and something that I am deeply humbled by. I am grateful that he appreciates highly of my work and that his feedback will help me to continue improving. Reflecting back on this year's journey, I take away three main things. Number one, the balance of plants versus the hardscape. This time, the plants were a bit too overgrown and covered up majority of the hardscape. As a result, you lose a bit of that detail. As Juan mentioned, the foreground is definitely too overgrown. Number two, the timing of plants. This is one of the most difficult things I have yet to master. I will need to improve on when and how I trim the plants to ensure that all the plants look their very best on the day of the photo shoot, especially in this case, the rotalas. Number three, the last and final point is that I am happy that at least I reached my goal I had set out this year, and that was to grow very beautiful and very healthy plants. Thank you to my family, friends, fellow aquascapers and sponsors that supported me throughout this entire year. Regardless of ranking, congratulations to everyone who participated this year. It's definitely not easy maintaining a competition tank, but it is all worth it. 
And that will do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Please stick around for some beautiful cinematic footage of this tank in all its glory. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.